Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, I tried it so you didn't have to. It's Alma Linux. So, uh, Alma Linux, you can uh, get to Alma Linux at almalinux.org. And it is an open source, community owned, and governed, forever free enterprise Linux distribution focused on long term stability, providing a robust production grade platform. Alma Linux OS is binary compatible with RHEL, and RHEL is Red Hat. And there's three options here, contribute, download, and migrate. Before we do that, let's look at DistroWatch. And you can see Alma Linux is number 26 in the list. It keeps flipping between that and Tuxedo, as in which one falls in the top 25 there. Uh, if you saw my recent video, uh, the top 25 uh, DistroWatch Linux distributions, uh, you see I reviewed Tuxedo at the time. But at that moment in time, Elmo was actually 25, so it would be almost impossible to um, do the list because it keeps changing. Uh, but Elmo is now 26th in the list, and we're going to be reviewing it to see how suitable it is for the everyday Linux user. So if we go back to Alma Linux, we'll click on the download link. I've never used Alma Linux before, um, so I have no preconceptions as to how good it will be. And all we have to do is click on this. So there's Alma Linux OS 9, Alma Linux OS 8. I'm not sure what the difference is between the two, but I'm going to click on the DVD. And you can see that's downloaded in the top corner and it's 10.1 gigabytes in size Now the other option you can do of course is the boot image and that will just give you a network installation image and then you download packages as you go so whichever one you choose I'm sure would be perfectly fine uh, so now Alma's downloaded I'm going to create a new virtual machine to install it onto browse local and there you can see Alma's there so I'm going to select it and it's actually found uh, the correct operating system straight away which is rare and the memory is a wrong number there I think um, I think we we'll just give it eight gigabytes um, four cores create a disk And here we are booting into Alma Linux for the first time. And the reason I do this for a virtual machine is you can then see what the installation looks like without having to use a mobile phone to record the screen. It does this check at the beginning to make sure there's nothing wrong with the disk. I'm going to escape to uh, get rid of that. So here we are at the installer. Let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger. And I'm going to click continue and this is the Anaconda installer and this is my least favorite installer of any distribution it's the same one that's used for Fedora it is just I, I don't, don't get it um, why can't it be linear like all the other uh, distributions I, I don't get why it has to be like this so to start off with you can choose your keyboard layout and you can see it's already picked my keyboard layout and for some reason the done buttons up there not down here somewhere it's, uh, I don't understand why that is uh, language support uh, again choose your language it's straightforward enough but again the done buttons in a weird place time of day it's already picked the correct time zone uh, the stretching of the screen is because obviously the virtual machine hasn't picked up the correct uh, resolution properly um, but this is um, good enough that you'll see um, the setup um, so it's picked the correct place but if it didn't you can click where you are on the map or you can choose a region or city from here click done um, the installation source we're going to leave alone that's your local media software selection um, server with GUI uh, you can have an integrated easy to manage server basic functionality uh, workstation which is a user-friendly desktop system for laptops and PC that's the one we're going to go for now it gives an, a list of um, additional software uh, so 
backup clients, a set of commonly used GNOME applications, remote desktop clients, uh, .NET development, development tools. All, all these things can be installed as part of the installation. And you can enter a Office suite for productivity. So let's, let's add a few of these things in. So GNOME applications will have internet applications on an Office suite. I think that's all we really need. I'm not going to do .NET development. And everything else we should be able to install as we go along. Now remember this is my first time um, using this so um, I'm stumbling along as a normal user would. And here we go, installation de destination. Um, so we're going to choose this drive here and you have to place a tick in the box. See it it's got this message at the bottom when you first go in and I click that but you actually have to somehow put a tick in it. It's not the most straightforward um, configuration around and if you wanted to dual boot the options aren't much better than this. It, you, you kind of stumble around. Now I'm going to leave the rest of it alone. I'm not going to encrypt or anything like that. I'm just going to click done. And now you see the little exclamation mark has gone which means I can now install, uh, except you'll see that the beginning um, installation is not ready yet. So we're going to network and host name. Um, so the network is going to be my Ethernet. Host name we're going to call it Alma. Click done. And the holy grail is to get this beginner installation to um, enable. And I assume that here, I have no idea what any of this stuff means. So we'll go down into user creation and we'll create a user. And there is an advanced thing here. Uh, so my home directory is that and you can specify your own user ID and add any extra groups you want in. And I'm going to click done on that. It's complaining about my password being weak. It is a virtual machine for test purposes. It's going to make me press done again to use the password anyway. And we're still not at a point where we can hit begin installation. So we're going to add a root password, see if that helps the situation. It's going to complain about the password and you have to click done again twice and finally we're at a point where you have begin installation. Now you can see that I was clicking around and I just kept clicking things until I filled everything in to get that button to, to um, enable. I, I just don't understand this installer it's just just have a one two three four calamari's installer has it right the Ubuntu installer has it right just do this, do that, do this, do that, do this, do that. In a linear fashion, that's all you need. This, as far as I'm concerned, is not good at all. So anyway, we're finally at the point where it's going to install Alma Linux and I will return um, as soon as the process has completed. So here we are, uh, it's finally installed. It took a little bit of time, um, but nothing to worry about says use of this product is subject to the license agreement. Um, I'm not going to worry about that for now. So reboot in. So I'm at the login screen. You can see it's uh, GNOME. Uh, that's the desktop that has been installed. Let's see if we can go full screen. It's not going to do it automatically, I don't think. I think I'm going to have to amend the... Now I've had this before. Let's see if we can do something about the display settings. And there we go, everything's fine. We're into Alma Linux. So the first thing we want to do is try out some Wi-Fi and some Bluetooth. So we can do that. What I can do is add hardware in, USB host device, and we can Click that icon there, and then we'll add another one in for Bluetooth like that. And we'll go back to our virtual machine. If I go up here, 
and I go for Wi-Fi. It might take a little minute, I might need to reboot after doing that to the virtual machine. Nope, oh, there it is. I can connect to my Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi is connected. I'm going to try Bluetooth. Searching for devices now. Bluetooth mode. Perhaps if I turn on the Bluetooth speaker, of course. There it is. If I connect to that. Connecting. And if I go to a web browser. Disconnected. You'll see that's disconnected. Now, I'm not sure why that is. We're at the Everyday Linux user web page. We're going to go into the videos. We'll just play one of the videos. So you can't hear sound at the minute, so we'll try and reconnect again. And it's not at all happy at this moment in time. So what we're going to do is remove the device. Connecting. And now it's connected. Still no sound at the speaker though. So that is digital. Yeah. So has been. You can hear that's choppy in the background. That's not working properly. And that's very hit and miss. So there's something not quite right with the um, Bluetooth. So we're, we're going to disconnect Bluetooth. Uh, let's look at printing. Go to add printers. No printers found. We're going to click unlock. Click add printer. No printer found. Should be able to type in the IP address. Oh, that's if I type in the right number. And there's my printer there, so I can click add. And it says printer added, so that's fine. Okay, so let's look at some of the software that's installed. Now remember, it was a 10 gigabyte download. So um, I installed the workstation, so you'd expect some workstation apps. And you, you know I chose the Office suite, so we've got LibreOffice. And the only other things we really got were Evolution and HexChat. And you can see there's nothing else here. Uh, so I wonder what happened to the 10 gigabyte install. Uh, where, where was all the software? Uh, so. A few minutes ago I went into the software, um, the GNOME software, and I did search for a few packages. So if I search for GIMP, uh, the GNU image manipulation program, then you'll see that appears. If I search for Caden Live, I get nothing. And if I search for things like Chrome, obviously you get nothing. Um, and if, if I search for Steam, you get nothing. VS Code, nothing. So where is everything? So I went into the software repositories and I enabled every single one of these repositories, except for that one perhaps, but... Okay, so they're all um, enabled. Uh, so if I search now, but open shot. Where is everything? Rhythm box. Nothing. So knowing that this is uh, Red Hat Fedora based, we know that the tools are DNF or YUM. So let's do YUM search uh, and we'll search for Caden Live. No matches found. Um, 
No matches found. Um, we can do the same with DNF, of course. It, it makes no difference whatsoever. So, as far as I can tell, there is no easy way of installing um, lots of software. Um, how do you get the um, packages that you need? And where is the rest of the 10 gigabyte download that I um, of that ISO image? It was it was, it was a large ISO image. What's in there? And where where's all the software? So uh, the only thing I can think of doing now is installing flat packs. So if I type flat pack remote, uh, there's nothing there. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up Firefox and we can click on Red Hat and we can just take this line here. And we can paste it in, press return type the password. So I've rebooted, we'll go into software now and we should um, be able to find flat packs and we can and we can install them. So that's Chrome installing and we can find things like Spotify I believe. Uh, no, we can't. Uh, Steam. Uh, Steam is available. Oh, Spotify. We can install Spotify. So yes, you can install applications using flat packs and using flat hub but there's nothing uh, immediately available via the repositories of Alma um, or from the large ISO that I downloaded uh, let's look at see if there's any interesting backgrounds just in case there's something there I'm almost ready to sum up I think there's nothing really of note um, particularly spectacular so let's sum up the ISO image is large. You can obviously go for the net install if you want to. Uh, that will be a lot smaller and I think I would advise that at this stage. Uh, the installation is the Anaconda installer. Uh, I really don't like the Anaconda installer. I don't like it for Fedora and I don't like it for Alma. Um, I prefer something linear like Calamari's or the Ubuntu installer. Uh, I don't like the fact that you're clicking around in that installer trying to find things and like I chose workstation and it didn't really give me extra that I thought you'd get with the workstation and it gave me hardly anything at all really. Um, the hardware support, the Wi-Fi worked okay, printer was easy enough to set up, Bluetooth um, it was hit and miss, it, it would connect and then disconnect, connect and disconnect. So um, that wasn't great. Uh, software packages wise there's hardly anything there despite selecting um, the workstation and, and wanting the extra GNOME tools and I got LibreOffice which is what I asked for but I didn't really get much else uh, what's more disappointing is when I search for packages in the package browser there's nothing there command line or within GNOME software so for the everyday Linux users experience this is quite poor uh, I enabled Flatpak and then I was able to install stuff. All in all, uh, it's a fairly underwhelming experience. I think if I was to, to choose a Red Hat based distro or Fedora based, I would go for Nabara. It's got a better installation routine. It's got default packages that are better to start with. And it's got um, good hardware support. So um, if you're an Alma developer, tell me where I've gone wrong. But uh, as far as I can see, this has been a fairly underwhelming experience. So remember, I tried it so you didn't have to. Alma Linux. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.